another episode of Sunday Side Up, the Pesach edition. I'm Naomi Nachman and I'm really excited to do a series for you on Pesach cooking. I have 19 years experience as a Pesach caterer and a cookbook author of Perfect for Pesach. And we're actually going to be doing a recipe today from my book. It's pretty easy. Part of this was actually on another episode, but I'm going to show you how to change it up a little bit and we're going to do a little bit more of technique and skills today and talk a little bit about prepping ahead. So we're going to be making in this episode Pesach Lakshan, aka Pesach crepes. Simple and easy recipes, easy ingredients. I've already put my 12 eggs in here. I'm going to use an electric egg beater, but you can also use a whisk if you have enough elbow grease. Okay, just going to keep this going. I do this on a low speed. Always start off low. If you put it in too high, sometimes you get an explosion. So it's always a good idea to start off low, just scrambling these eggs. I'm going to add in the water, the potato starch, and the salt. We want to make sure you get out all those lumps, it's really important. Nobody wants a big bite of potato starch in their crepe. Okay, I'm going to kick it up a notch on the beater and I'm going to make sure all those lumps are out. All right, we have a beautiful smooth egg batter here, crepe batter. Uh, you also, you will see a little bit of bubbles, you don't want to make it too bubbly. All right, we're going to slide this over to the cooktop. Before we even get to cooking, we're gonna have a conversation, an important one, about crepe pans. This is a nine and a half inch crepe pan. It is non-stick. It has never been used for anything but crepes. At home, mine are taken care of so well. I have about three crepe pans that I put on three different burners and I stack them, paper towels between each pan so that they don't scratch each other. You do not wanna scratch this surface. When I wash my crepe pan afterwards, we take water, soap, and our fingers. We don't even use a sponge, and we gently wash the crepe pan. We don't want anything to scratch this. If you follow this carefully, you will have beautiful crepes. Here, okay, height flame. I'm gonna turn it down to like a medium. Okay, and we're gonna get that hot first. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of oil. Here we go, I'm just gonna do a drop of oil, a drop. I don't even measure this, I don't even have a measurement for you. But say a drop of oil, because what we're gonna do now, is take a paper towel, just wipe the oil around and then off. We don't need so much oil, I see that's even a little bit more than I wanted, I'm just gonna rest that there. Just, it should have a, a, a slightly f a film of oil on it, but without having a lot of oil, okay? Now, this is getting really hot. So we're gonna start cooking it. So we need a third of a cup. So I use this kind of measuring cup. It is the perfect amount to cover the surface area of a nine and a half inch crepe pan. So what we're gonna do is I take it and I stick it to the bottom, all the way to the bottom, and I stir it a little bit. Because sometimes the potato starch does settle. So we kind of like, every few minutes, I just give it another stir and I use the measuring because who wants to get another thing dirty? Stir, stir, stir. Take it. You ready for our first one? I call these no flip crepes, let's hope. And right away with the wrist action. Swirl, 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 swirl. Beautiful. We're just gonna let that set for a minute. You take now rubber spatula, just go around the side. Loosen it a little if you need to. And this is all set in the middle. I don't flip these. I call these the no-flip crepes, and all I do now is I don't flip it to the other side to cook. I just flip it onto a plate. Done. Beautiful. All right, let's get another one in there. Swirl, swirl, swirl. And this amount is for 12 crepes. We use 12 eggs. That's good for 12 servings. Swirl, swirl, swirl. Let that set a minute. 
Sometimes they come out easily. Sometimes they just need the spatula around the edge. Perfect. You can just fix it. Look how gorgeous they're looking. All right, let's turn these into lakshan. I just want to show everyone these beautiful crepes. They are no flip. I cook them on one side. They're white and they're beautiful and they are great for, as we said, for making blintzes or egg rolls or whatever you want to stuff them with. You just, you know, the typical, you put it here, then you roll it up. As I said, you can always refer back. See, that's what it would look like. This is a crepe made with oxygen. <laughs> um, but you can go back to the episode of the Southwest egg rolls. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we need to turn them, as we said, into lakshan. What we're gonna do now is just roll the whole stack nice and tight. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Roll, roll, roll. And we have a nice big egg roll, literally. Take a big knife. You don't, don't do it with the little knives. I've tried, because it was a little bit hard. I found the big knives are much easier. Chef's knives or a Santuco knife. Always for Pesach, treat yourself to a new knife. If you're making Pesach, you want to have good equipment and good equipment is a really good crepe pan and a really nice new knife. Okay, I'm holding it in the claw grip and I'm just making as thin slices as I can. I want them to be skinny, skinny, mini noodles. Keep going and I'll show you. We'll unravel some and here we go. We've got our own lakshan. Okay, now how do you prep these in advance? You know, nobody wants to be busy with their children or grandchildren running around to Erevianta. People think that you have to make this fresh. You can make this a month in advance. What I do is I put into this, I squeeze out all the air. I'm gonna roll it. See how like I'm squeezing the air out? I like these uh, zipper gripper ziplocks. See, I've got almost all the air out. It's almost vacuum packed. See? Light on. Almost no air. And I throw it in the freezer. When I'm ready to reheat this, I, or the day before, or the meal before, I'm ready. When I start thinking about when I'm going to be serving this with my soup, I take it out of the freezer, I put it in the fridge, and then I put up a pot of boiling water. I've even done this frozen, and it's gone from freezer to boiling water. It's going in soup. Nothing is going to happen to this. It is like foolproof, that tastes delicious. You're going to love this as much as we do and prepping ahead makes your life so much easier. But you're going to have these little bags all ready to go. I hope you enjoyed this recipe and we'd love to hear back from you about what Pesach recipes you'd like to see in the future. We hope that you'll enjoy our Pesach series and for recipes like this and more, go to kosher.com. Okay, I forgot the name of it. You can see I'm pausing. What's this called? No, the oven. What do we call this? Stove. Okay, start again. All right, you ready? We're going to head over to the cooktop and we're going to get this. <laughs> it's a good blooper. Ah. Should I say that? Yeah, is that okay? Prepping it. Prep it. You're going to... Stuttering now. 